Just wondered what went into the decision to have Evan out and left and Jared catch today. Um, well, Charlie Taylor uh, is a little banged up, more of a deal where, you know, out for yesterday and, and today. So that kind of changed things up a little bit. Jared was going to be in the lineup no matter what. Evan hasn't had an opportunity to be out there. So a little bit of him, maybe getting him some repetitions out there, but more than anything, getting Jared in the lineup and also giving him an opportunity to catch. He's He's come a long way, and I think he's, you know, really kind of Evan Russell 2.0. He's a converted outfielder. Uh, who Coach Elander and, and really his teammates have helped, helped make him better back there. How have you felt about Evan behind the plate defensively so far this year? I think he's done great. I mean, um, if you were going to treat it as a, hey, what do you think about this project? How is it going? Anybody in the stands could see that the, the quote-unquote project is going well. But I'm answering your question just based off if, if Evan was a catcher, which to this day he is, but going into the year he's a catcher, I still say he's done very well. And, Probably the best part of what he's got going on is the rapport with our pitchers, um, even the umpires a little bit, and then obviously with Coach Anderson too. You got to work closely with that pitching coach on game day. Jared ever caught before, and what went the decision to try to give him a shot? You, you know, when he was younger, um, a, a guy who who helps us in the Nashville area a ton with recruiting knows the kid well. Reached out to him. He said, "Yeah, he's done it." And then Alan Cockrell, who obviously was Mr. Everything here on campus, worked with him this summer and said, would you give him a chance back there? And and he kind of did. And the videos are like, this This kind of has the makings of, of maybe something happening. And what kick-started all that, to better answer your question, was he swing the bat so well, and yet you've got Evan Russell coming back, your whole starting outfield, and some other guys. Where's this guy going to fit in? Um, so, you know, the old saying goes, if you hit, you don't sit. That's true. But if you got several good hitters and there's only one DH spot, you know, you might be sitting even though you can hit. So just trying to get him out there. Such a good kid. He's turned himself into a great runner as well. So he's a, he's a valuable utility player to the max. As a play a ton of guys the last two weeks, do you feel confident you've kind of figured some things out about who your best nine are? Or is it still big exploration right now? No, I, I think um, you're getting information every day. And uh, e even if that's just on the bench or in pregame or in practice, you're still getting information. Uh, but it's hard to argue that the most valuable information is not in the, the midst of a, a competition against another opponent. So um, it's good for those guys to get their feet wet and all that good stuff, maybe get some of the goofy freshman stuff or New Year stuff, new player stuff out. But um, it, it helps us kind of know where guys are at. And that doesn't mean that they're going to be set. We always tell our guys, this is as of now. You know, you come up to the office and say, you're a DH only as of now. You know, by all means, prove us wrong. And that brings me back to Jared Dickey. Came in out of shape, didn't really know what position he was supposed to play, wasn't swinging it as well as he did when he was younger. And uh, he's flipped that whole deal around. Most runs in the beginning of the series and program this way, just how much fun was it being in the dugout to kind of watch the guys and make that history? Yeah, you know, more than anything, it was fun to watch the guys cheer each other on. I mean, Patty Friday probably got the biggest cheers and, and then other guys too were into it for their teammates. So seeing that part and then the one flip of that is we just talked in the outfield, they made it so easy on us as coaches the first two days to almost play, I don't know if chess is the right deal, but kind of put all the pieces where we wanted and you felt really good at the end of both games. Today, um, you know, we weren't able to play a full nine innings and you weren't sure if that was going to be the case. So. It was a little bit hairy, and, and also we, we made a couple mistakes on the bases, so we ended up losing a couple at-bats. But it's close to a, you know, it's never going to be a perfect weekend, but a lot of good stuff from this weekend. The way the guys were you know, still working some of those at-bats, you know, working walks, fighting on pitches, the fact they were taking it seriously for the whole weekend, I mean, I know that's what they're supposed to do, but still that they did it in that situation, is that promising? No, I think it's a sign of, of more character than, than skill. I mean, uh, I think our players have a little higher skill level than I own is, but those guys too, with two strikes, they're an absolute pain in the butt. So for our guys to match that, uh, as opposed to maybe you're trying to launch home runs or, or whatever it is, is certainly encouraging. But the other thing is these guys are, you know, they're, I hate to get too philosophical. This is a pretty dang good part of their life. And you only get so many innings out there. So. Uh, 56 games can be seen as a lot or a little, depending on how you want to, you know, you know, make the argument. But the bottom line is every inning out there is valuable, and our kids need to realize that, and I think they did it this weekend.
re-watching some of the basketball game yesterday, you're getting pretty fired up there at courtside. What gives you that energy and passion after coaching a baseball game? So you get worked <laughs> up? Uh, I've been thinking about that game. I hate admitting this because my number one focus needs to be this, but I've been thinking about that game for a while. Um, you know, I was someone was generous enough to give me those tickets. I would probably get thrown out of a minimum of seven games if I had those tickets <laughs> all year long. So now I've I understand where Spike Lee and some of those people are coming from. I don't know that I need to be down there again, but our, our team too in, in basketball. Sometimes it's to be a great team, you got to go through some stuff, and maybe you, you you get into some arguments internally and externally, and. You, you play worse than you should sometimes. You don't win when you could have. And, and a lot of times that's kind of valuable ingredients into being a great team. And I think our guys have gone through some of that stuff. Again, it, on game day, it's more valuable to learn lessons. But um, without being in that locker room, just being a fan and an observer, uh, I think those guys have kind of found themselves and they're really fun to watch. So um, how could you not have fun sitting there watching that game? And then two, that environment in there was insane. I mean, maybe because I had better seats, but that Kentucky game was unbelievable. But th that environment was better yesterday, I think. Why are you a Zakai Ziegler fan? Uh, he's not in it to make friends, man. He's out there to win. <laughs> and uh, I I'm a fan of the whole group, to be honest with you. You probably saw some of that yesterday. Uh, but he's one of many that Coach Barnes gets to play the right way. And uh, I, I think that guy, obviously, the fans draw to him because he's, he's not huge in stature. Uh, but he's got the old big heart going on out that court. So something that every college athlete, in my opinion, should emulate other than the other basketball players in our conference. I don't think like him, but that's kind of the way it should be. Cortland back at shortstop all weekend long after Trey played there in the midweek. Just what you think of how Cortland performed this weekend? I love that last double play he turned. Um, obviously, he hit the snot out of one today. Now, Jordan Beck showed him up pretty good, so he got teased in the dugout there on that deal. <laughs> Um, but he's going to be able to do some things for us offensively and on the bases. Uh, but the, the core of what he brings to the table is leadership on the infield and, and sound defense. So um, he's our guy at that spot. But it certainly helps to know to look out at the field. If something happens with a deal like Charlie Taylor, just taking one pitch off the, the fingertip a little bit wrong. Um, we've got guys who are prepared to help us win games at, at every position. A big week this week for you, Coach, it starts with the ETSU on Tuesday. There's not a lot of love loss between y'all with how games have been going lately. It's been competitive. What do you want to see from your team? Yeah, every week's a big week. Um, so we'd like to see our guys. Uh, first of all, I'd like to see us get to play a full nine innings. It's kind of the thing that really sticks out. You know, we're in a very competitive game against Tennessee Tech, and you get robbed of those last four innings. And we only play seven innings today. It kind of goes back to my thing. I mean, I, I would give anything. Um, I wouldn't want you guys watching, but I'd give anything to go back and wear a jersey for an inning, you know. So um, it'll, be, it'll be a good opportunity to get back out there on Tuesday. The weather, I shouldn't even bring it up. It looks like it's solid. And then, yeah, anytime you play an in-state opponent, there's going to be a little extra flavor to it because everybody knows each other. But I think, um, you know, they're very well coached. I don't know how they fared this weekend in the rubber match with, with Wagner, but they'll come in well coached, plenty of talent. And, and um, you know, hopefully our guys can make sure they're prepared after a long weekend on their feet here out in this weather. One more question, guys. One more. All right, perfect.